Hey guys, so this week I decided to do something a little bit different and I'm going to show you the process I used to fit a, uh, a Bowie knife guard. This Bowie knife, this specific Bowie knife is actually a design that I'm using for my wedding which is uh, coming up very soon so I've kind of got to get to work on it. So I've already forged and um, finished ground the blade and uh, obviously started my hand sanding finish. But now I have to start the handling process. Now I've sk roughly sketched out the design that I want to use and using this uh, set of vernier calipers I'm going to just quickly take a rough measurement of the overall design I've decided on. Now what I didn't do in the drawing or on purpose was work out how thick I wanted, how uh, wide I wanted the handle uh, because that's kind of subjective to my hand. So in this instance I'm going to cut the guard an inch wide, a little bit over an inch. It'll probably end up coming to just under that uh, in the final dimension but giving myself a little bit of extra material means that I've got more to remove because it's easy to take it off, it's not so easy okay, to put guys, back so, on. Um, just remember, whenever you're using power tools, make sure you've got personal protection on. I've got goggles on and uh, hearing protection. So just make sure you're always safe when you're using power tools in the workshop. I've cut my block off the uh, main bar. I've obviously put it to the water because it gets really, really hot when you hit it with the angle grinder. I'm now going to measure my 10 centimeters of material from this point over here and because there's a slight bevel on the top of this piece of material here I'm going to add another half a centimeter again I can always grind that off but I can't put it back on So as you can see, I've used the grinder to just uh, square everything off and flatten all of the faces to give me something to index off when I do my marking out. Because now I've got to go and mark where the tang slot is going to be cut and then we'll uh, come back. Okay, so one thing I have to do before I fit the guard or, or before I measure up the guard for the tang slot, I need to file the shoulders on the blade. Now I, when I heat treated this, I differentially heat treated it so the heat hardening line goes to about there and so this tang is still soft and able to oh, be the, uh, guard. Uh, in order to file the um, ricasso, the shoulders of the tang here, even, I'm using this hardened file guide. Um, now there are a couple of YouTube videos on how to make one of these. I actually purchased mine from a company called Chance Knife Making based in America and I think they still sell them through their website. You can also order them through Gamico. So basically what I do is line up the shoulders of the tang with the file guide lips a little bit lower than them so that I can make sure I have a complete shoulder and then I tighten these little toggles down. Now when you're filing, especially when you're filing such a fine area, you want to make sure you're using a good sharp file. I have a whole bunch of new files over here. And also, you want to use a file card. Um, now a file card is just a very uh, lightly toothed uh, wire brush that's designed to clean the teeth of a file. You always use it in one direction and you always use it following the grain of the teeth rather than going across them and it really helps in getting a nice clean cut. Now because I'm using my living room and in the interest of staying alive, um, you got to make sure you clean up after yourself because I uh, you want to keep the missus happy and the thing is I'm planning on marrying mine. I definitely want her to stay happy so uh, make sure you clean up after yourself guys. Alright, so 
with that said, I'm just going to quickly make a couple of light passes. And I want to make sure that the file teeth are biting into the top of the shoulder because that's where the guard is going to sit. And you can always tell because the, the file skates over the, uh, over the file guide because it's hardened but it will bite into the softened steel of the material cutting. Okay, so I've now filed shoulders. I'm not sure if you're going to be able to see. Uh, shoulder that goes all the way around and is evenly matched on both sides so that when the guard fits up, it's going to fit perfectly against those shoulders. So, now that I've done that, I can measure this section here, both that cross section and that cross section, to find the size of the tang hole I need. So just using my vernier calipers again, I'm just going to measure the top here, and that's exactly 5 millimeters. I go down to the bottom, and again exactly 5 millimeters. So I'm 5 millimeter thickness. Uh, which means that I'll probably use a four or a four and a half millimeter drill bit in order to give myself some clearance for filing square. And my height at the shoulders is 26. Yeah, 26 millimeters. 20, 26 and a half. 26 and a half millimeters. So five millimeters by 26 and a half millimeters in a rectangular form. So <clears throat> when it comes to marking your uh, piece of steel, unfortunately I don't have any die cam or, uh, or marker at the moment. I'm sorely out of that kind of thing, but I do have an old texter. And so all I have to do is give this a light shading. It doesn't need to be very dark. Of course on camera it's not going to show up very well. Now I know that the marking is going to have to be relatively high in comparison to the block. It's not going to be dead central because you've got to remember that the majority of the length of the, the guard, or you know, the larger majority of the length of the guard, is below the uh, ricasso rather than above. So I'm going to mark down to about here, make sure it's all filled in. And as long as I'm marking the area I know is going to be the general area, of my mark, then I don't need to. I don't need to mark the whole thing. Um, when you're using die cam and uh, and the large sharpie markers that I know a lot of makers like to use, um, you can go a little bit more full on and you can you can cover the whole thing. Um, but when I'm using this very 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 simplistic version of marking, this will do. So now that I have it coloured in, I can set my vernier calipers. Now I need to get a width on this. Now it should be close to 25 millimeters. It's actually after grinding the faces flush it's actually 24 and a half. Now you can go super exact with this. Um, I don't have a digital vernier so this is as close as I get but um, if you had a digital vernier you could go very very super exacting. If you have a mill, which I don't have um, you can get very, very exact, but I'm going to be doing this all by hand. So, for 24 and a half, I'm going to subtract the five millimeters I need for my tang hole, which will give me 19 and a half. And then in order to get a mark on either side of that, I'm going to have to subtract half of 19 and a half. So, half of 19 and a half, is 9.75 millimeters. So on these very basic verniers, I'm just going to put it just before the one centimeter mark and lock that in. And that means that when I run this as a scribe, up and down the, uh, up and down the marking, using the edge of the material to mark, and flip it over and mark again, I should have what will be close to a 
half centimeter half centimeter thing. I'm not sure if you're going to be able to see that again, but there's a mark there and that's exactly five millimeters. So that gives me my my width of my tang hole, which means that that gives me a center to run to. Now in the interest of having a, a place to center mark, mark to, I'm going to halve 24 and a half, which would be 12.25. I'm going to run a rough center line. I'm going to flip it, because this is not very accurate, I'm going to flip it and do the same the other side and that shall give me two very close points, very close, right in the middle there, to then mark between for my center punches. Now as far as the height goes, what I'm going to do is position it on the drawing just above and just below the lugs, the, the quillens of the, the guard, and basically by eye, I know that I need 27 or 26 and a half millimeters for my tang, which is now slightly thinner than what was in the drawing. Yeah, so 26 and a half. Now I know that, I can position it on the drawing, just above and below, and I can roughly mark an area where the tang should go. And that matches up with the drawing below my mark. So I'm not sure if you're going to be able to see that, but I'm going to mark there and mark there. I've got my two marks in my center line. Now, what I do from there is take... Oops. <laughs> not my lunch. I'm going to take my hammer, and I'm working with very tight tolerances here. Now, I know I'm going to be using a 4.5mm drill bit. Actually, I'll probably use a 4mm drill bit, so I'm going to set it to exactly 4mm on my vernier calipers. So, that's 4mm there. And I'm going to take it from the bottom, bottom of the mark here and I'm going to describe a line and then from the top and I'm going to describe a line and what that gives me is the two points where I'm going to mark for my first two drill, port, drill holes and this is important because if you miss if you miss on the top and bottom holes it doesn't matter, much where, matter where the the chain drill goes uh, you know, as far as up and down is concerned on this line, but the top and bottom holes mark your, uh, your the furthest extent of your your tank. So now I'm just going to use this center drill, this center dot, to mark the two spots that I just described, I'm making sure to keep it on that center between those center marks, and there you are. So now I have two center marks on the piece of metal, there and there, to mark the first two drill holes that I'm going to do for my tank slot. So now I've got it chucked up in the drill, four millimeter bit, and I'm uh, ready to make the holes to prepare the tank slot. the chain holes. Unfortunately I made the mistake of drilling the central hole before I drilled the uh, the two filler holes and this one got a little bit off course and ended up slipping back into the central hole but that's okay because what I'm going to use, I'll use my jeweler's saw to saw out that section uh, before I go to the files. There we go. Alright, now all I do is get the, the saw cut started Now jeweler's saws aren't really meant to be used in this in this capacity. They tend to uh, break quite easily when used with pressure. So I'm actually not putting any pressure on the saw itself. I'm just letting the saw do the work. Putting no weight on it except for the weight of the saw. 
this is a long process, but um, it'll save time and uh, it'll save the files. Saw blades are cheaper than the needle files are, so I'd much prefer to, to hog the, the majority of the material off with this jeweler's saw. I'm using one of the rougher teeth settings of this jeweler's saw, or a number five. And then it feels like it's almost through. And so, basically all I have to do is saw through all of the intervening material between the holes and uh, then I'll be able to file it flush. Alright, just like that. So I'm going to do that to the rest of the holes and then I'll uh, come back and I'll show you the filing stage. Hey okay guys, so as you can see I've um, removed the inner material from the, from the cut with the jeweler's saw and uh, <laughs> went through a few few blades trying to do that unfortunately these blades are very small and very fragile so it does happen so now just working around the tripod I'm just gonna start filing opening up the slot creating a flap on one side and then I'll start creating a flap on the other side and then I'll start test fitting the blade. So I'll do that for a little while and then I'll come back to you. Okay so now I've filed out the guard as you can see to uh, the rough shape and it fits almost not but not quite down on the shoulders that I filed on the tag. So now all I'm going to do is I'm going to put a piece of copper here to protect the back of the um, steel with a thinner guard, I'd actually use a steel plate that was a bit thicker to give it some structural support because otherwise what will happen is it'll bow as you knock it on. And then I grab this uh, just section of 32mm pipe, um, slots for curved tangs, and my wooden mallet, and with a couple of taps, a couple of solid blows, it's firmly seated. Against, against the shoulders. And now what should happen is that I should be able to try and wiggle that guard and it's not going to move. And that's the best fit up you're going to get. Now what I'm looking for here is gaps along the side of the blade, which I can't see any visibly. Gaps between the guard and the shoulders, which again, not visible and then gaps top and bottom, which I know there are none. So that's a nice tight fit on, that's how you uh, friction fit a buoy guard. Next to okay, so I've rough marked the, uh, I'm not sure if it's going to show up in camera very clearly, but uh, I've rough marked out where the isolation for the lugs are going to be, so the two quillons, and then this is the central portion that's going to be in as part of the handle. And I've marked that on all three, uh, on three sides. So now I'm just going to rough grind all of that material out to start the shape of the uh, guard. I've got my respirator and I've got eye protection on. So without further ado. So I've just marked the outside profile. As you can see, the uh, quillons have been brought down to uh, close to their final thickness. Obviously, I'll have to finish that up when I do the finishing grits. I've just marked the oval cross section of the guard, and now I'm just going to grind that out. Okay guys, so I've got some uh, banks here here actually. I uh, was originally intending to use zebra wood, but I can't find the piece that I uh, had lying around for it. So instead we're going to go with this. It's a native Australian wood. Uh, fairly porous, but not too bad. And I'm just marking where the tang will lie inside the handle, and I'm marking the outer perimeter of the handle with this sharpie. Make it easier for you guys to see. 
normally what I do is uh, either mark this out with pencil or um, glue the template to the piece of wood with spray glue. But I've run out of that too. <laughs> so there you go, that's the overall template drawn out and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a uh, rip saw to cut those sides off and I'll cut that length and then we'll drill for the tank. center. This is a 48 mil block, so half of that's 24. Yeah, that's 24 up there. So I can just give that a quick scratch with the, uh, the verniers, and that should give me a rough center line, which I can then mark. One of the advantages of using such a large piece of wood is that I've got a little bit of room for horizontal deviation. Uh, now I know that my tang at the tip is 30, I'm just going to check that again, it's, uh, no, it's 27, so 27, so what I'm going to do is measure height, which is 48, perfectly square, so 48 minus 27, is 21 and then half of 21 is 10 and a half so then I can mark the top and bottom of where my tang hole needs to start now obviously I don't want to drill perpendicular lines to that marking because the tang is tapered this way. So what I'm going to do is as I drill, I'm going to drill in an angle one way and an angle the other way to create a almost V channel. And I'm doing it slightly undersized because I plan on burning my tang in. So next thing will be drilling. So I'm going to do this freehand uh, because I don't have a drill vice at the moment and I can't afford a new one. So I'm just going to do it this way and hopefully I'll be able to afford a new one relatively soon. <laughs> Um... hole and basically what I'll end up doing is drilling a little bit more, burning a little bit more, drilling a little bit more, burning a little bit more to get the perfect fit. I'm only heating up the very end of the tang. I don't need to heat up the whole thing. Um, the rag that I've got tied around the blade has actually been you know dipped in water so it'll prevent the heat from running onto the uh, the heat treated blade. I'm not so worried if it heat if it treat um, if it runs up into the Ricasso but uh, I don't want it to run up onto the blade itself. So about that temperature, make sure that your orientation is right. Just get in the hole and push it down. This can get quite smelly. And it takes a few burns to get down to full depth. Especially with harder woods.
So I'm just going to keep doing that until I get down to the depth I need. And then um, I'm going to take small needle files and remove the charred surface from inside the slot. Because otherwise that won't glue um, properly when you go to set the glue up. So I've done my burns. I've tapped the guard into place just to give myself the reference point. And uh, now it fits. Bang on. And uh, quite accidentally, the uh, face of this block actually fits the guard almost seamlessly, which I'm really happy about. It means I don't have to do any uh, faffing about with trying to get it all plumb and stuff like that afterwards. If I hadn't have got it correct, which often, often happens, uh, what I would do is actually uh, ink the surface of this and uh, ink the surface of the block and um, press it onto the, the guard and then remove the high spots, uh, the, the spots that, uh, or remove the uh, spots that inked onto the, uh, onto the guard. Or I'd actually probably do it around the same, other way around, ink the guard and, and take off the high spots on the wood. But I don't have to do that because it fits perfectly. So next video uh, will be me shaping and finishing this handle and guard. Um, unfortunately, I'm doing this very expediently because uh, this is my wedding knife. This is going to be the knife that I used to cut my wedding cake on Saturday, April 14th, which uh, is not very, very far. <laughs> it's not far away at all. It's, it's only a couple of days away. So anyway, thank you very much for watching. Thank you to Nathan for uh, helping me film this and uh, keeping me sane. Um, <laughs> and uh, I will see you guys in the next video. Cheers.